In this video, I will be explaining level 77 of the back rooms. This was actually a tiny level, but it's also full of really weird sub areas and a few dangerous environments, as well as some outright mental hazards. And all of that good stuff is what makes a fantastic backrooms level. So sit back and relax, grab some hot chocolate, grab a blanket, turn on those Christmas lights, and let's get into the explanation, shall we? So level 77 of the back rooms is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe and unsecure with a relatively low entity count, but that's actually only because the level is kind of small. There's actually a good amount of entities here. It's widely considered to be one of the shortest levels in length and in width of the back rooms, and also one of the quickest ones that you can escape. Again, with all that said, it's pretty dangerous still. Like, don't, don't overlook that. The level takes the appearance of a passenger train. Its overall design looks like a London underground train, for example, from real life. This train lacks any markings or any decals from any real life brands. There's no noticeable features. The train is also located in some sort of underground railroad, and you can tell so if you look outside the windows, you're not going to be able to see anything except darkness. The only thing you can see is if you get up where the conductor is and look forward, you can see train tracks in a tunnel. The entirety of this level isn't actually just one train car link though, as there are several different sections that you can walk through by going from door to door and seeing where it leads. These sections are where the level's danger really begins, so you're gonna need to tread lightly and be careful of what doors you actually open. One notable feature about this level is that there is a position sign inside of each train car. Now these signs would normally tell you what destination you're going to on a real life train. So if you're going from you know Washington DC to Charlotte, North Carolina or somehow, it would say Washington to Charlotte. But here in this level, the sign says unknown position and that's all it says, which kind of adds to the eerie factor of it all, in my opinion. The level has actually been called boring by many wanderers who don't explore it, and they think since it's so short, there's nothing to do but walk between the different train cars. There are some other forms of entertainment you might find here in this level, such as newspapers or magazines scattered about random tables, and these newspapers are actually enigmatic in and of themselves for a few reasons. Firstly, all papers have headlines only. There's no dates or times or anything like that, just big bold headlines. Secondly, after the first two pages of the paper, the rest is always blank. There's no words, nothing at all, it's just blank. It's almost like it's a prop for a movie or a TV show. The articles on the first two pages are also most times very graphic and disturbing. They're often talking about brutal injuries or car crashes or kidnappings or something like that. It's unknown why they're this graphic, but you can leave it up to interpretation. When you spawn inside of this level, you'll be inside of the train near the cockpit, which is assumed to be the front. Right inside the cockpit, you'll notice a face lean, which seems to be controlling and driving the train, even though it's going in a straight line forever. I don't know what he's doing, but he's driving it. The face lean is always unresponsive and non-verbal, but its motor functions and reasoning skills seem to still be there. You really can't get its attention. You can talk to it and it's just like a brick wall, but it still moves its arms around and touches levers and knobs and stuff. This is where you'll notice that the train cars here all possess a similar hum buzz that level zero does. And besides the noise of that buzz and the train on the tracks, that's all you'll hear for the first few miles of your journey. But once you go through enough doors, you'll realize that the level is split up into several different sections. The first section you might encounter is a maroon section. These are typically inhabited by something called crawler entities. However, it's pretty rare to actually see one of these creatures since they're normally pretty skittish and hide. Crawlers are a small fungus-like spider entity that inhabits roofs and attics and basements of some levels, or in this case, they inhabit the maroon train cars. They're not very dangerous unless they touch you, so all you gotta do is not let that happen. Continuing your journey through another door, it might lead you to the black section, where wretches tend to live. Now, y'all know about wretches already, but these sections are pitch black and they're devoid of any light. Even if you have a flashlight, if you turn it on, that's a death sentence, they're just gonna come running at you. But inside this black section, the wretched cycle tends to happen very quickly. The wretched cycle, of course, is the slow breakdown of your mental and physical health due to lack of water, lack of food, and lack of human interaction, but it all happens quick here in these train cars. And for some reason, the black sections here have a very high number of wretches. It's unknown if the wretched cycle starts when you get to the level or if it only starts 
parts when you get to a black section, whatever it happens is quick. If you somehow make it through that section, pink sections are next, and these are the home of facelink entities that are wearing typically pink dresses. The lighting inside these cars are bright in some spots and dim in others, and the design of the actual train car is more old school themed, like there's big armchairs and tables and that kind of thing. But don't be fooled by these facelink's calm appearance, because they're very dangerous and they'll attack right on sight if they notice you. Most of the facelink's in these cars are young girl -like looking ones and they kind of look even creepier than normal again they're facing so they have no face but they're wearing like really weird haunted doll outfits so if you get creeped out by that you're gonna be scared here the beige section of train is the next one and it is overrun with huge instances of the clump entity clumps of course are disgusting amalgamations of arms and legs and hands and feet that run around at high speeds attempting to attack anything they see and they are huge in this beige section of train they physically are bigger and they're way more aggressive and since the entities are bigger the beige section actually has bigger walls and the train itself seems to grow here the beige sections are very dangerous because you don't actually notice that they're inhabited with entities until you see a clump and if you know anything about clumps they have one long arm that can reach out and grab so it's important that you see it before it sees you Moving along through the beige section, you might open up a door into a brown section. Now these brown sections are randomly placed through the level, and they are the only parts with no entities reported. They're just your typical modern train car, and the only thing here is that buzzing sound and the sound of the train tracks. Lastly, there are gray sections, which are inhabited by a very rare entity known as this. I forgot how to pronounce it, but it's N-G-U-I-T-H-R apostrophe X-U-R-H. They take the appearance of a very large spider with over 16 legs. They hide on ceilings and spit down chemical saliva at prey to subdue them, and that means humans too. It acts as a sedative, and it'll put you asleep if you get in contact with it, and when you wake up, you'll be inside of a large web doomed already because they're devouring you. They can be anywhere from eight inches long to three feet long. So it's not very fun and you should avoid gray sections at all costs. Honestly, these are probably the worst sections, even worse than the wretch and the clump ones to me at least. To enter this level, you'll need to be on level 72, find a very long train, get on it and walk all the way to the end of that train and open the door at the end and you'll walk into the cockpit here. To exit, you can pretty easily do so by no clipping through any of the car doors to get sent back to level 72, or you can just walk in the cockpit and no clip through the control panel to get sent all the way to level 125. That's the only good thing about this level really is how easy it is to escape. The danger comes when you find yourself too deep in the middle of one of these train cars because the very air itself is so enigmatic and inside seems bigger than it actually is, you can get lost easily and you won't be able to find a door to no clip. So don't do that. Let me know if you could survive all the way through each of these different sections of the train. I'm interested to see who we think could do so. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Once again, Merry Christmas. Thank you all so much for tuning into this year's Brewmas. I can't believe it's already over, actually. It's kind of surprising, but it was great while it lasted. I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did. I love going over classic levels in order. It's very nostalgic. I know y'all like it too. And if you didn't know, I have a playlist with all the levels I've gone over in numerical order. So if you ever want to go back and watch them in order, you can go to that playlist. They're already there. It took forever to do that. So if you want to check that out, be my guest. Anyways, I can not wait to see what next year brings. I have a ton of stuff planned, and I hope to see you all there when it happens. I look forward to another year of exploring strange liminal spaces and systems and weird areas of our deepest mind that we can't access normally. Thanks for all you do. I will see you in the next video. Peace.